Greetings, greetings. Welcome to a Tuesday episode of Forgecraft 2. I hope all of you had a great weekend. I've been making great strides and things here at the Coop. And, uh, why do I always forget how to do this? Yeah, there we go. Uh, I've got a project that we're going to be doing today. The Portal to Alpine. Um, Alpine Portal. I have it set visualize. I really love this feature put in by Vasky. Um, Vasky's actually got some really simple but elegant and so helpful features that uh, are in a part of Batania. And it, most of them don't have anything to do with the Blowers themselves. It's stuff like um, the book. The book is so useful. It's so easy to bookmark things and unbookmark them. It is so easy to, oh uh, gosh, let's go. All the way back. Index, there we go. Uh, you can look up, do lookup history. I've got different things as slots for different things I can bookmark. I can share things online. Show different notes that I've made in various sections I'm already on. I can look up anything right here that I want to. Or I can go section by section. And things like being able to visualize right here. Boom. So simple, so easy. Well, I want to do the portal to Alfheim specifically because we are at a point where we kind of have a, a bit of a hurdle, so to speak. Um, we are blocked to a certain extent on progress because we now are where we need to learn more. And the best way to learn more is to get our Lexica Batania, make an Alpine portal, and then throw the book through the portal. Yeah, exactly. So, what I'm going to do, I think it'll probably work with the Ring of Magnetization. I've lifted this up a little bit, this spreader, specifically because I want to be able to shoot straight for that mana pool and that mana pool. However, to get kick-started on mana amounts, whoops, I have two mana tablets that I've already made. These mana tablets are specifically so that I can actually put these pools down and fill them up to a certain degree very quickly. I have two sparks, but I don't know if that's going to work with this whole equation. Um, still figuring that out. Um, I think what I want to do, actually, real quick, I'm going to funnel. Whoops, got a little bit too close. This is set to drain mana out of the tablet. What kind of armor is that? What kind of armor is that? Just top that off. That one is empty. Now what we can do is drain this the rest of the way. I actually do not... Um, oh. That's what it looks like. Unenchanted. Okay. Interesting. Made it because I can add an integrated B suit. Nice. That's always a cool feature. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to break that. I'm actually going to come over here and put this. I'm going to consolidate down to one pool temporarily because if sparks do work, then I want all of my mana from this coming into this. Solid dating mana pools. Next thing to make a portal. Let's get all the rest of this. I think that's going to empty almost all of that. And we'll see here in just a moment. How much is going to be left? Enough that I'm not worried. Let's get these, these, put them here. Um, okay, I'm actually going to put these away. I will bring that system back. 
But in the meantime, we have two of these to kickstart our pool. Um, at least a book. Then I might pause to see what the next step is. Gotta toss the book through first. Yeah. Why do I have... Okay, there were actually two pieces of um, cooked meat sitting there. I'm not sure quite what happened. Yeah. Okay, so we have one pool. Let's see, is that... Yep, I love, see, that's another simple feature that Batania has that makes it so easy. Not only does the UI tell me right there, mana spreader with mana pool underneath it as the target, but I see that illuminated box for targeting. It's just so simple. I really do love stuff like this. It makes the experience for Batania so much easier. So now we've gotten to the point to where I think I have all of my parts. I'm going to go over them real quick. So the one thing that's not actually strictly listed is glimmering living wood. Now it's just normal living wood. You get normal wood logs, put them around a pier daisy, and it turns into living wood, right? That's the part you know. Well, if you go all the way back, where is it? Glimmering flowers. That is getting a flower and combining it with some glowstone dust. Well, if you get glowstone dust, whoops, right, plus a piece of living wood and combine them, you get glimmering living wood. Okay, that's pretty simple. So it says we need eight living wood blocks, three glimmering living wood blocks, one elven gateway, read on, two mana pools and two natura pylons. Um, I'm going to grab those, but I don't think they'll do anything. I suspect the sparks will do nothing, but I'm bringing them in hopes. Uh, let's see. So, the Elven Gateway Core. This is the root of the gateway. The control block, as it were. This thing is real simple. Living wood on each side with some Terra Steel Nuggets down the middle. Okay? Then the two pylons that you have to make. It's a normal mana pylon. Right? With... Terra Steel Nuggets right there. Eyes of Ender and everything. Then you set it up in this configuration, which is why we have this right here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut. I'm going to get everything in place. And then before I turn this thing on, uh, because I put it together and then right click it with my wand, okay? Before I turn it on, I will come back, start recording, and we can go over things. But real quick, I want to show you a feature that I've implemented. This is a carpenter's pressure plate. It is set to in, send an inverted signal. If I go... Actually, let's do this one. Right down here, there is redstone, redstone, sticky piston. Yeah, so what is happening is this is always sending a signal out. The piston is always up. I'm going to put the elven core on here. But the reason why I've done this is because what I, all I need to do is stand on here real quick. And the piston will go down and come back up. What that motion is going to do is break the shape. It will break the multi-block structure. And it will cause this to revert back to being off. This is a simple way to turn off an Alpine portal. I will readily admit I got this inspiration from Direwolf20. So, basically... Once I have the portal turned on, it starts draining mana from this pool and this pool. Rapidly, apparently. So I want to right-click, turn it on, toss my book through, get the book they send me back, then break the portal real quick to turn it off. Then, whenever I want to, I just right-click it with my wand to turn it back on, throw things through, turn it off. So I'm going to get things together. I'll be right back. All right, now we are back, and we actually have a built portal. Now, I've actually accomplished a lot, but I'm going to come back to that in a second. 
Um, it has been several hours since I last recorded, specifically because I did record the second half of this video and then went to edit it and discover that there is a problem with some of my settings in Windows 10, specifically with my editing software and PCM audio. Bandicam doesn't seem to want to... The audio tracks end up being variable lengths with PCM audio. But I switch it over to MPEG-1. Excuse me, MPEG-1, no problem. I have no clue why. Anyway, um, so uh, I've done some test recordings now. <laughs> we're going to resume and we're going to see the first half of this video. Probably actually doesn't have game audio. Hopefully this part does. Um, so I've made a portal, right? Living wood, glimmering living wood. We know this. Okay, these are actually getting charged via the sparks. I'll go over that in a second. It's complicated, but here's what you do. I right-click this with my with my handy-dandy little wand, the Elven Gateway Core. It activates, and then what I want to do is I want to get some things that I can toss through. And just like that, it comes back. I step on that to retract it. I did have to move the piston over one because sticky pistons can't move this. Don't know why. A normal piston can push it up, but a sticky piston cannot pull it. So I put the piston under this one. So now I just step on this and it breaks the, the shape and kills the gateway, which means I stop spending mana. Now I think mana uses is used every time you throw something through. That's what it seems like. When I do larger batches of stuff, It's like per activation. And then it just kind of stops. And then it seems like it doesn't really use any more mana until something is thrown through. But for the sake of just in case, I think there's an activation cost. And then it prorates every little bit after that is when you toss something through, it uses energy. That That's a guess. Um, so with this, we have an off switch. Nice and simple. And it does work, as you can see. I threw some... Uh, mana pearls, which are ender pearls that I put into a mana pool. I did uh, ender pearls. See, there's mana pearl into an uh, in, ender pearl into a mana pool. Gives you an ender pearl, uh, a mana pearl. Well, I can't talk. And then you get the mana pearl, throw it through the gateway, and you get pixie dust. Yay! You get living wood made with a pure daisy. Toss it into the gateway, and you get dream wood back. Very, very cool stuff. Um, I don't know if this stuff turns into anything yet. We can think that out in a minute. So, um, if you get, do I have, yeah, do, Elementium. Elementium is two mana steel ingots tossed through, the, thank God it's not Terra Steel, but it's two mana steel ingots tossed into the portal, gives you one Elementium ingot. So a whole stack of these gives you a half stack of these, but they're very, very useful. So what you can do with those, what's the first thing that you want to do? Oh, also, what I also did was I threw my book through. I turned the portal on, threw my book through. I got a replacement book back, and then I turned it off real quick, all right? Well, what you do is you go through your book now, and it actually has, let's go to Elphomancy, the Elven Guard, and it's got this really cool interaction, a letter from the elves on the other side in Elfheim. And they talk about how they want to help you. They have resources we don't, but we have resources they don't. So they'll trade you, which is why you're throwing things in the portal and they're giving things back. That's how that basically works. And then it fills a couple of other things, like uh, resources of El Elfheim. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, living wood gets turned into dream wood. You can make a dream wood twig. I don't know what you can do with those. Uh, Man of Steel gets turned into Elementium. Uh, mana Pearls gets turned into Pixie Dust. A block of, oh, a Mana Diamond gets turned into a Dragon Stone. Very interesting stuff. I don't know what the Dragon Stones are used for. Uh, Nether Quartz get turned into Elven Quartz. I, 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 I don't know what that gets used for yet. Um, a, a glass, and it looks, um... Uh, ooh, okay, trading goes for Mana Glass. So if you get mana glass, which is just a normal piece of glass thrown into a mana pool, you get uh, elf glass. And elf glass, apparently the pattern changes based upon when you place it, or I mean, how, where you place it and how you place it. So there's all sorts of stuff that they will actually give you in exchange. Um, there's more elf lore. 
uh, some more crafting recipes, but even if you go back to the normal stuff, man, I'm well, suddenly you've got elven mana spreaders. Elven mana spreaders hold more mana, they transfer more mana quickly, and they shoot mana farther. That's important. So these are much, much better upgrades. I thought maybe if I got a mana pool and I tossed it in, I'd get an upgrade, but it doesn't seem like there's a mana pool upgrade. It seems like that is the top end for mana liquid storage. Um, uh, so, mana prism lets you dynamically swap between different lenses, mana lenses. Uh, I think given a redstone signal or something like that. It's very cool stuff. Here we go. Spark augmentation and spark tinkerer. Okay, um, let's start off with the Spark Tinkerer. It's actually not hard to make. You get two Elementium. This is why I wanted to make some. Two Elementium ingots, three normal living rock, and one redstone gets you the Spark Tinkerer. You put this next to something that you put a spark on, okay? Then what you can actually do is craft an augmentation. There's different kinds of augmentations. The Diverse Spark... Um, it has the uh, use it when you put an augmentation onto a spark you infuse a spark with it well it, let's say you do the dispersive augmentation what it does is it automatically acts like either a mana mirror or a mana tablet in your inventory when you're near a spark that has the dispersive augment it makes sure that all of your armor and stuff gets recharged that's a big deal dominant it pulls in mana from nearby um, pools or objects that may have a spark, a normal spark on them. Or there's the inverse, the recessive spark, which supplies mana to non-augmented pools. Well, I mean non-augmented sparks. Well, what I did was, this is a recessive, which means now all I have to do is aim this at this, and if you notice, it's receiving mana, right? But it's not going up. If we go over here, boop, it went up a little bit. And this one, boop, went up a little bit. See, this actually has a normal spark on it. This has a normal spark. And the recessive spark right over there, boop, you can see that right there. That recessive spark is supplying automatically all the rest of these, including these two pools. So now this one pool right here is the primary pool, and it's automatically distributing remotely. It's just like we had um, three pools right around our distributor, but it's doing it at range, and that's very cool. So that's one of the things, the big upgrades that I've really wanted. Somebody told me about spark augments, dominant and recessive sparks, but I didn't know how you get it. Well, now I do. You actually get it by creating a portal to Elfheim, and that's a very cool thing. I really like that uh, that that upgrade, so to speak. Um, so yeah, you just make the spark tinkerer. You make a, I made a recessive, there we go, right there, recessive. It is uh, one or a rune of earth, some pixie dust, and a mana steel ingot. Then you just right click it onto this spark tinkerer. You have a normal spark on this, okay? Then you give this a redstone signal and zap, it pushes it over, and this gets that orbiting symbol. Now here's the thing, a spark can only have one of these augments at a time. That's it. Now if I wanted to, I could actually do dominant here, dominant here, and these would not only pull from that recessive right over there, right? But it would also be dominant towards all other systems. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it normal right now. This works. So mana coming in from here is being distributed between that pool and that pool automatically, which is, I'm very cool with. Now, down here, you've seen some changes. There are five elven mana spreaders down here now. Actually, I think it's one two, oh, what is it? Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five right here. Then we have another one. I think I could probably, if I wanted to, eliminate this one. I probably could. Because I think this will cover the distance. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Um, so, I have a floodgate here, an ender tank that has an endless water supply on the other end of it. This is a, a fluid tank right here. Basically, what I did, let's go to squid form real quick. I hope I don't get stuck. There we go. Um, this is water all the way down. Why did I do this? Well, 
I specifically did this to make it easier to come down here and upgrade future hydrangea, floating hydrangeas. If you look, I'm getting bounced around all over the place. I think I'm too chubby to fit down between. And there's a current that's whipping me around, you see. I don't know if I'm going to be able to actually... Well, there we go. Okay, here we go. We're at the bottom. There's now one, two, three, four layers. I had two previously. I'm now up to four layers, which means I have basically um, doubled my mana, my mana generation rates. Um, this entire thing has been filled up with water now, which means it's going to be a lot easier just to do lines of hydrangeas layer by layer all the way up. I already have these uh, mana spreaders here. And the mana transmission rate is a lot faster now that I have the elven mana spreaders. That's cool. So slowly but surely, I'm going to fill all the rest of those up with hydrangeas and just basically make a mana generator, a big mana battery. And I think that's going to be good. Once I do that, I'm going to replace this glass with grass. And we'll just have this one little hole opening right here. I might actually move that mana spreader right up here to seal it off once I finally get it done. Or I could put this one right here and move this one back to this one's position because that one will, I think, reach there. So that's going to be really, really good. Um, I realize I'm freaking a lot of you out right now specifically because the portal's not centered. I didn't really notice it until after I placed it. I meant for the gateway block to be on this line. I built it and then started getting the whole redstone stuff underneath it working. And yeah, I... I so I, I will I will fix that in between episodes. I promise it will not stay this way. Um, so yeah, basically, this is where we are right now. We've made a big jump in technology. Suddenly we have a lot more uh, interesting recipes, a lot more, a fair amount more recipes and cool things at our disposal. Um, there is, let's see, Alephomancy. There is Alfheim Apomancy. They actually have their own bee. I don't know what this bee does. Um, Alfheim Drones. Yeah, see? I, I, I literally don't know what this bee does. I have no clue. Um, it might generate mana. I'm not sure. That might be the mana generating bee that somebody else added in, I think. Magic bees or something. Don't know. But I definitely want to do that. But in order to do that, I have to get to a dreaming bee. And in order to get to a dreaming bee, I'm going to have to do some research, I think. Um, we've got more items at our disposal. Elementium equipment. I didn't even notice this. Uh, can to be shaped into um, decent, resistant to damage, about half that of diamond, as well as the ability to drain mana to prevent damage. Each comes with their own ability or power of sorcery to make them out of the alarm. The armor allows the wearer to, when hit, have a chance to spawn a pixie that goes after the attacker, dealing decent damage. More pieces of elementium armor are equipped, the higher the chance. Ooh, that could be good. Starting off, the elemental pickaxe will destroy dirt, cobble, netherrack, and other mundane materials, leaving only the ore and fine resources. That's interesting. Combining the elementium pickaxe and the, with a terra shatterer and a com crafting square allows for crafting grid, I think would have been the ladder to also get this power this can't be undone huh okay i can fit a shower in my pocket screw cobble okay um the elemental shovel elementium shovel will case the block dug will in case the block dug is affected by gravity dig all the blocks of that material above and or below it no more gravel falling while mining Ooh. okay um, elemental axe dribbles as a weapon if used to strike the finishing blow on a skeleton, zombie, creeper, or even player. It will give a chance to decapitate them, leaving their severed head or skull behind. Mm. I already have a sword that I use for decapitation. Uh, the elemental shears hold the ability to, when held like a back like a bow, shear any nearby sheep with speed, uh, with speed within a large area of effect centered on the holder. It's weird. A.E. Shearing. The sword has a chance of spawning a pixie when hit. This holds true when uh, this holds true when no elementium armor is warm. Increases the strength of any... Oh, okay. Increases the strength of any pixies spawned. Ooh, that's nasty. 
or tuna on the 16th night, whatever that means. Um, 10% less mana cost on mana tools and rods, chance for pixies to apply potion effects. Ooh, I might make a whole set of this stuff. I'm wondering. Let's do that. I'm, I'm curious. Now, let's get some iron. Um, some iron. And iron. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay. We're going to have to go over here. And I'm just going to drain the hell out of these. So much. Okay, so I should have, there we go, 64. And now we get this. I'm just going to stand here until we get our 32. There we go. Just walk across that on my way away from it. I'm going to make a helmet. I'm going to make a chest plate. Let's see. Pants. And boots. Hey, there we go. Which one of these has... Right now, it looks like that one has slightly more. I think that rebounded. I'm not sure. Okay, so some of our stuff that is tied to our armor, I know we're going to lose. High step and swim and stuff like that. We'll see. Okay, 10% less, less chance, uh, or less cost on mana tools and rods. Chance for pixies to apply potion effects for the pixies that we spawn. I wonder if we get... One, two. Some of that, some of that. Okay, the combination of weapons does not actually cross with, um, yada yada. Okay, um, so I've got all of this stuff that I can redo. I'm curious, though. This has a normal block. I like the beam thing that this one does, but I'm actually not sure. Um, I don't like it because a lot of times you can right-click on a chest. I'll show you. You listen? Did you hear that? That is firing a beam, which means if I actually do this and somebody's standing on the other side of the chest, I'm going to accidentally attack them. Uh, it's one of the things I don't like about that blade. This one has a straight-up block, which I'm, I'm, I'm cool with. Let's see if we can cause some trouble real quick. Do we even have anything spawning within ours? Pig... Oh, it's a tree pig. Ooh. Anvil head. Well, that just one shot that poor guy. Plus six attack. It seems like it does more than that. Maybe it's my imagination. Um. Oh, I probably was feather falling and it counted as a jump strike. Wolfsbane. I'm getting more meat drops than I normally would. That's just one that time. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, that's like five between two of them. I don't know. I'm going to read up on this thing. I think it has potential. But uh, apparently... Let's look at... Wait, no. Yeah, Elementium Sword will increase the chance of a pixie spawning when hit. Okay, so when something attacks me, it increases the strength of any pixie spawned. Meh, not bad, not bad. I might keep it on me somewhere. Let's put it right there. Um, And go back to this bad boy. 
for the time being. Yeah, I do have looting on that. Cool. Uh, this stuff, I don't know what I want to do with this. Because I do like the enchants, like... Oh, actually, I forgot. Hang on a sec. Sojourner Shash. Sojourner Shash. Okay. Hang on a sec. Let's go to Sodge. No? There we go. S-O-U. Okay, traversing... So this actually gives movement screen increase, jump height, and resistance to fall damage. Okay, put the fall damage. Um, the power, this power comes at a small, small mana cost. Uh, if not sneaking, it also wears you to jump over, uh, to walk over uh, one high gaps with ease. Okay, so I am getting a lot of my abilities that I did get from my armor. Now, I didn't get the zoom, but I didn't use that a lot. The only thing I kind of miss is swift swim, but I might be able to make up for that. So we'll see. I think this armor also prevents damage to itself as long as I'm gonna, yep, I'm just gonna put that stuff away. Um, let's go down here. Zoom. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, those are empty. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're basically a waiting game here now. We're going to wait for this to fill all of these up. I think it's going to be really, really cool once we get this done. Um, I do not show off my Elementium armor. It is a discreet secret. Uh, but if we whoa, go like this... Um, suddenly we are Elementium wearing with flappy wings. So, yeah, it is a bit of a secret weapon in the grand scheme of things. This does mean if somebody picks on me, then um, I get the benefit of spawning some actual, let's see, sharpness, fortune, efficiency, looting, nope. So I'm actually going to have to make some protection, and um, I'm going to have to make some more books, basically. I need to make some more books, specifically because, um, uh, man, that means I might need to go XP farming. But I need to make more books because I can then enchant this armor, my Elementium armor, with uh, this same enchanting system, the mana enchanting system. This does mean, however, that I'm going to actually have to get this pool, those two pools filled up, Plus, get this pool topped off so I can do that a couple of times. But once I get that done, I can then um, do some enchanting between the, this episode and the next. And I can put, oh, let's see. Um, I could probably... One thing I definitely need to do is I still have, I think, yep, I have this with XP boost one. I need to get that up to XP boost like two or three. Once I do that, then it'll be easier to fill this with some different trips to the end or the nether, some uh, uh, farming trips, so to speak. But um, let's go over here, the enchanter. Yeah, I want to get XP boost three on at least one of my swords. Uh, then we can do stuff like protection. Maybe one piece have fire protection have protection on the other ones, have one piece blast protection, because it does help. Um, recipes. I think it's interesting that that recipe button is there. Um, okay. Don't need feather falling. Projectile protection might be good, I don't know. I want to put respiration on my helmet. I want to put aqua affinity on my helmet, because it actually helps. Respiration helps us longer breathing times underwater. Aqua affinity is, lets us, is what lets us see farther underwater, like a squid, and it increases our movement speed underwater. So that is going to be the replacement for the swift swim that was on the other armor. Um, thorns. Wow, 76 levels for thorns rank 3. Woo! Um, that might be cool, though, because then we can damage somebody plus spawn some pixies. Woo! That might be something to save up for. I'm going to get some um, planning underway for some more uh, things to get crafted, some XP farming to do. 
In the meantime, thank you very much for swinging by. I appreciate it. I will catch you folks later. Um, I think I need to... Yep, I need to go get some more Ender Pearls. Ender Pearls. Boop. Okay. I'll catch you folks later. Thanks for swinging by. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you.